this book, book six, is set in the Mogao Caves on the Silk Road in China, far northwest. And the western, the west of China is out there in Dunhuang, in that area. There's a famous book from Neo-Confucian times, 16, 15, 1600s, titled The Journey to the West. It's about a, a monk, uh, many hundreds of years previously, who traveled from the capital of China, out the Silk Road, through Dunhuang, down into India, had to go around the Himalayan mountains, and there he spent uh, the, uh, many, many years collecting Buddhist texts, brought them back to China for a, a full round circuit of seven, took him 17 years, and spent the next 20 years translating them. But he's the pivotal care person in the transmission of Buddhism from India to uh, China. And he moved, he passed through Dunhuang and the Mogao Caves. In the journey to the west, there's a character called Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong means monkey king. He's a four-foot little monkey, impish, humorous little character, runs throughout Chinese civilization and culture, is in uh, Chinese opera and even popular culture today, and is a character here in my book, too. followed him up and along the stairs in a walkway, sensing he knew the way, my monkey king guy. The heat of the sun now on us, I could feel the day coming on, hot and dry as an Arizona desert. With the sun, we entered the cave, Tang Dynasty, at its height, sumptuous detail everywhere, glorious art informating a world beyond art, art its servant, glory in its servitude, exalting in worship of beauty beyond beauty, the highest, deepest, true beauty, the good, the true, the beautiful, the one. All waves of awe overwhelmed me. I felt it once again. Wu Kong silently stepped aside, stayed back out of the way, allowed me to move forward past the murals toward the niche deeper into the western wall, where those before me reigned in splendor, glory, the Buddha Sakayamuni, his right hand raised in the mudra of have no fear, though I was already far beyond fear, where no fear can ever reach, taking in all the scene, his sitting on an octagonal throne, Mount Meru, as it were, the center of the universe, cosmic mountain transcending the worldly plane far beyond the mountain caves. Encircled with a nimbus of spiritual fire, his glowing nature made manifest. He sat in lotus position, head erect and calm, peace and nobility emanating, resonant in his bearing, crowning essence, long ear lobes intimating the princely world he left behind, flowing robes. He seemed to float above the cave floor, above the world, while his companion stood on either side. To the left, flanked by Ananda, upon a lotus, in humility, service his garland and ceaseless sacrifice, tending to all, remembering all the Buddha's sermons. Thus I heard it said, Ananda passed down the Buddha's words to the generations. Flowing out around the world and through the world, his hands held together in front of him, ready to serve selflessness his station. To the right, flanked by Maha Kashyapa, an old monk, mendicant, a little gaunt. Peace to and surrender, service and protection his boon, perhaps smiling faintly. Buddha's flower sermon lingering in his mind, Chan and Zen enveloping his mind and life, 
successor and convener of the Sangha. Buddha entrusting him with the Dharma gate. No words or letters, the form of the formless, a transmission beyond remembered scriptures, experience, not creeds and letters. So Kashyapa stood and meditated next to Sakayamuni. Right hand too raised and have no fear, Bodhidharma, the successor. The Lotus Sutra passing to all bands. Next, both sides, faces in meditated bliss, curving brows and jewels, lotus flowered robes, Avalokiteshvara, Guan Yin, Kanon, his, her guiding presence. Merciful, compassionate, standing, heads leaning toward the Buddha, their Buddha nature emanating, drawn, sign toward its essence, curving delicacy of detail, much as showing the way to light, protection, compassion, flowing toward all creation, sustaining, enlightenment foregone, leading all toward it. Supreme sacrifice for humanity, that all humanity might find mercy, love, compassion from suffering on the road of life. Exquisite robes and sashes, coiffures, jewels, symbols of symbols, of experience calling all on to experience, raising, transforming, saving all from peril, purely guiding to a pure land, as if saying, praise, call, intone, Guan Yin, Avalokiteshvara, Amitabha, for deliverance, all may reach the pure land. Last, stand the guardians of Buddha, Vajrapani generals, image of the Buddha's power, protecting him from the demons of our nature, guided, girded, in warrior armor, ready to defend, tread underfoot, ignores forms of the Buddha's form, Guan Yin, spreading his and her protection, care, once holding staffs and weapons, soon Wu Kong in different forms. The Tang pantheon complete, raised to the highest heaven. Nirvana, wrought at its best in paint and clay, artistic form of highest form in the heart of the cave, the Tang Cave to a map of the mind. I found myself upon my knees, gazing at the niche, the walls and statues, symbols of another world. Not this, though made of this, pointing on beyond to one higher, as on looking up to the ceiling itself. Resplendent jewels bedecked a stupa, Buddhas of the Lotus Sutra, welling up out of the earth a lotus out of the muck and mire, the mire of this world to which we cling, clings to us. Manjusri holding the sacred flame of wisdom, cutting through the illusion mandalas, medicine wheels of the yeast. The ultimate beauty of the universe, Dun Wang, the great western paradise, the pure land of Amitabha Buddha, Buddha of infinite light, compassion, Guan Yin, the guide to the promised land, on the journey to the west. Nothing in the world is difficult, only the mind makes it so. Physics of the mind and consciousness. On that ceiling and those walls, the image of release, moksha, achieved in form, experienced by those who pass this way. Eternities went by while I kneel. Time before timelessness, behind the figures, upon the walls, bodhisattvas gazed out, and women, the beauty of the female, silks and elegant coiffures graceful gowns, musicians playing the pipa, heavenly music accompanying the 
up sorrows, gliding, dancing upon the plain above. I knew not whether I looked or closed my eyes, meditative realm beyond this world, form moved into formlessness, and I followed with all my heart into my heart and the heart and soul of the universe. I wanted to kneel and sit on the floor to the right, but knew it was not my place, 2,500 years having gone by. My karma leading me elsewhere to service in a different way. And so I had to resist the impulse to turn away, turn away, tearing my heart out from a long for place of peace and rest. I pressed my hands together, bowed again, taming the monkey of mine. And then a sound reached me in the deepest of inward moments, a stir behind me, as to awaken and bring me back, lest I might have slipped over, gone forever, lest, oh, so gratefully, but alas, not yet. Soon Wukong gently, slowly stepped toward the door, and I knew I had to follow. Broke away my gaze, but not my soul, taking the experience with me, memory now, all things passing, impermanent in this world of dross. Outside on the walkway, Wukong looked at me, said nothing, but held out his arm toward me. <clears throat> Swallowing hard, <coughs> Swallowing hard. I knew it was time to leave. Moving on, move on. I hesitating, I told Wukong, it was here that the minder said to me, cutting contempt in his voice, scowling, face contorted. Some of the Japanese tourists actually worship in these caves. I know, said Wukong kindly offering his sustaining arm. I grasped it firmly as I never had before, needing his strength and protection, my guide upon my way, mounted the wind, cloud soaring beyond tricks, carried us aloft, away from that blessed cave. 